And one of the things we tell people is the smart card has the same readout as the microchip does. And the microchip, of course, developed before that. But, uh, and, and of course, the smart card has a microchip in it. So there's a lot of things that pull together that point to what Scripture says, that uh, you'll not be able to buy or sell without the mark. Now, now, you're saying that this can be injected? Is it that small? Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, very, it's a, a very small chip, a two ten thousandths of an inch in diameter, and it's injected with a... Uh, in fact, uh, you know, here in Portland, uh, they're putting microchips in pets all over the place. A lot of people are taking their pets in and getting a microchip put in. This has been a, you know, very common thing, and uh, uh, getting, uh, getting a microchip uh, in embedded. But also that microchip tells the tells them who the pet owner is and what his address is too so that's kind of interesting you know that uh, uh, your dog goes out and bites somebody and comes home and you think you're safe and uh, and uh, they come looking for you because uh, because this happened but these are all things that are that are moving along InfoPet claims they can keep track of a billion pets to within 10 feet of where they're at with the microchip in it hmm. We look at a, um, a satellite network that has uh, 23 satellites in it now. So if your dog gets lost, basically through the computer network, they can tell you where it is. That's right. But, but you feel this is setting it up to do this with people. Well, I, this is, uh, you know, what we've moved into is uh, there's, a, there's a kid scan now is, is uh, being touted as the thing, and that's a microchip in the, in the children. Down in Florida, they've been putting microchips in. There's been a lot of... Uh, microchips used in uh, in Alzheimer's patients and this type of thing, justifying it, saying, "Well, this is, this is here." What we're telling Christians to do is they need to look at Scripture and what the Scripture says, and uh, it it very clearly says, "Don't take it." And okay. Well, in just a minute, we're gonna we're gonna have uh, uh, Gary and Sherry Mink sing with us again, and then right. after the break. When we come back, what I'd like you to do is open up the scriptures and share with us how you think what's happening in terms of, of these microchips and the one world government, how that really does line up with what we find taught in the scriptures and how we who are followers of Christ should respond when the government begins to ask us to accept these identification chips. Praise God. So we'll do that after the break. Here, if you're watching, if you've just tuned in, you're watching the Northwest Praise the Lord program. I'm Bill Perkins, and this is my wife, Cindy, and I'm the senior pastor at South Hills Community Church in North Wilsonville. We meet at the Grand Parkway Cinema, which is just uh, south of 205 on uh, 10 o'clock Sunday mornings. And this morning we have as our guest Dr. Carl Sanders, and uh, Dr. Sanders has been sharing with us fascinating information. He has been involved at the very uh, tightest inner circles of government research uh, in terms of microchips and microchips that are used for identification and you've been sharing with us that we're now using these to identify animals they've got a chip that they can actually inject into the hand and and be used and I guess you're now going to share with us what all that chip contains and how you feel it lines up with scripture so let's look at the at the word of God uh, Dr. Sanders and, and well, praise God you know I, I believe this from Genesis to maps the whole thing I, you know I praise God for his word uh, when we were uh, doing the research and, and we, we came up with the fact that, that this should be uh, self-contained, uh, powered so it can put out a signal, because how can you trace people if it, if it didn't have a signal? Um, we didn't know where in the body we were going to put it. We spent a million and a half dollars uh, doing a lot of independent research, having uh, uh, medical teams go out, and, and uh, they were just... Uh, we, we got a lot of information from Boston Medical Center, and, and all these things came together. And we sifted through this pile of information as a team. And uh, by the way, all this was done in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, down in, out on uh, Black Canyon Highway. But we, we searched through all of this information, and predominantly it came up. The two places in the body where the temperature changes the most rapidly is just below the hairline on the forehead and the back of the hand, the right hand preferably because most people are right-handed. Now, you know, they could have asked any mother. A child walks through the door and they're a little bit glassy-eyed, and the mother says, well, have you got a temperature? And she checks their forehead. You don't find them her checking their ankle or their, uh, uh, their elbow or anything else. Check their forehead. And so we could have saved a lot of money if we just checked with a few moms and uh, found out <laughs> where, to, where to do this. But, uh, but anyway, uh, as this thing went along, I still didn't tie it to the book of Revelation. When, when God... Uh, 
put the call on my life after I'd been to the, many of these meetings, and I had been in the Orient for three years. I traveled into mainland China, carried Bibles, traveled into Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, Romania, uh, in the, in, behind the Iron Curtain, uh, when, when you couldn't get in there, and I carried Bibles. I went in to lecture on computer-aided design at the universities. I kind of got on a circuit there, and I carried Bibles. Uh, my good friends, uh, uh, Transworld Radio would fix me up with some Bibles, and away I'd go. Well, when God put the call on my life then, at, at the airport in Seattle, I'd come back from Hong Kong, been there three years, had my family with me, and he put a call on my life, and he said, go and share this message. I said, I can't. This, this is going to cost me in my billfold. How many times we put our billfold ahead of what God has called us to do? And I ran for three years, I, two and a half years, I ran. And I ended up out in Twist, Washington, uh, had an 18-room house on 80 acres overlooking the river. And I was, we were having Russian Pentecostals in, we were sponsoring them coming in, we were doing all kinds of things. I'd been chairman of men's ministry at a large church in, in Seattle, at Overlake Christian, for, uh, for a period of time. And, uh, and I was doing all kinds of things for God. I said, God, look what I'm doing. He said, be obedient. I'm calling you to be obedient. And uh, so what happened was with this call that came on was that he wanted me to go and share the message. And he showed me some things in Scripture. And if we can turn to Revelation 13, verse 16, and, uh, and I read this Scripture, I, uh, and he calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Well, the version I had said on the right hand or on the forehead, and I said, praise God, we didn't do it. I was really having some, some uh, misgivings here. I said, praise God, we didn't do it. It says on. And the Lord said, look at the word mark. I began to, I looked up the word mark in the, in the uh, Strong's Concordance, and, uh, and I've got it kind of laid out here, but, uh, and we can, I can just share that. But uh, um, it's 5480 in the Greek, and it's charagma. And uh, it says, uh, sharpen to a point, uh, an etching, a scratch, and this type of thing. It takes you to the word charax which says to, uh, also uh, akin to that, uh, to the idea of scratching a stake, uh, uh, a trench. And I said, well, God, that, that still isn't, you know, that, that looks like it, but is that really what you're, what you're showing me? Then he said, look up the word 666. I said, the Lord, is, it's not a word, it's a number. We've been, we've been working with that number. We've, we've figured out all kinds of systems to try to figure out who the Antichrist is, and, and we've been working with that number. And it, it, it's, a, it's a number, not a word. He said, no, it's a word. And sure enough, it is. It's 5516 in the Strong's Concordance. It's Chicks of Stigma. Uh, but uh, the uh, 22nd, 14th, opposite letter, uh, the Greek alphabet, intermediate between the 5th and 6th, used as numbers denoting respectively 600, 60 and 6. And uh, that takes you, the last half of that word, it takes you to stigma, which is 4742. And uh, stigma, it says, stizo, to stick or to prick, a mark incised or punched into for recognition of ownership. Hmm. And when I read that, Pastor Hawet, because I said, my God, my God, what have we done? As a team of men, there wasn't an antichrist in the bunch. I didn't see anybody in red underwear and, and long uh, tail and horns and this type of thing. I saw men that were just trying to do a job. And, and we looked at, at the evolving of this over a period of time. Uh, Fairchild has just announced uh, three days ago a, 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 a chip the size of, in diameter the size of a, of a human hair that has three times the data on it. This has it's an implantable chip. That's what they're doing with it. They, so the development continues on. Uh, back when we laid this thing out uh, uh, with Boolean equations on the wall and laid out what we were doing, and uh, w you know we, we struggled in this and we, and we put it together, now the refinement of that because of the technology is going on and on. Uh, what we're looking at now uh, is a very sophisticated uh, transmitter, transponder, that can go in the back of the hand that can contain a tremendous amount of information. Now, does this really, you know, we look at how that line